let's fire up a router and let's see if it's a lot like one of those switches we were dealing with or let's see if it is really unique. And I'll give you a little hint, it's a lot like those switches. When they start up, they initiate the router software and we're just gonna verify cabling, plug that thing in. And on the router, we actually have a power switch. So we can go ahead and flip the switch on the router and we can observe the boot sequence. What's gonna happen if there is no configuration on the router? Yeah, it's gonna offer to utilize the setup script. And the setup script is going to be just like the one we saw, very similar to the one we saw on a switch. So no configuration in place. It will prompt to guide us through a configuration with the setup script. So how about, let's go and li literally look at the login on the Cisco router. And guess what? You're going to feel totally comfortable and totally at ease. We've got the user mode. We type enable and we go to privileged mode. Yeah, so this is not some brand new operating system. This is just like the operating system called the Inner Network Operating System that we were dealing with on the switches. We've got our context-sensitive help. It works just like it did on the switch. On the switch, we would issue the show version command to determine what type of a switch we are working with. On the router, we're going to issue the show version command to see what type of router that we're dealing with. So you're going to be able to leverage everything that you learned in that switching study that we did. Pretty awesome. By the way, I see a question in the queue from Rowan, and he says, Hey, back on that subnetting... How many questions in subnetting could we expect in the exam? Oh, I'll tell you, they'll be enough so that if you don't know subnetting, you fail. How's that? <laughs> yeah, I can't give you a number, but I can tell you, you're not going to pass if you don't know IP addressing and subnetting. I mean, there's going to be so many of those questions that it would fail you, okay? So, you know, sometimes we go, you know what? I'm going to ignore a particular subject because I'll be able to pass without it, but not in this case. In ICND1, if you don't know IP addresses inside and out in subnetting, you won't pass. All right. So let's uh, get into some router configurations here. Hey, there's modes on the router, okay? There's modes, and those modes on the router, they're pretty cool. Uh, they're going to act just like the switch, where we have a user mode, a privilege mode, a global configuration mode. Yeah, we know all about these. To save our configuration, what would we do? We would do a copy running config, startup config. In order to name the router, we would use the host name command. In order to uh, put a banner message of the day, we would use the banner command. Okay? So lots of different ways in which we can arrive at the configuration that we had with our switch. Let me show you a couple of commands I didn't show you back at the switch, though. I just remembered I didn't show you these. Watch this. I put them in this router already, I believe. Let's do a show running configuration, but I just want to look at the configuration of the console. 
So I'll say begin at console zero. Hmm, this router doesn't like that one. All right, let's just do a show running config. All right, and so we're gonna go down in this configuration and we are going to find the console config. Look at this, exec timeout zero zero. What this is saying is that the console port will not ever time out due to inactivity. Zero minutes, zero seconds. This is really nice for the lab environment, but it's a really bad idea to put this in, in a production router, right? You don't want the console to just be able to sit there logged in endlessly. Then there's logging synchronous. And what this command does is it prevents console messages from interrupting your typing. Watch this. If I go in and turn it off, let me show you what happens. No logging synchronous. Watch what happens. When a console message appears, my typing goes at the end of it. Oh, that's a nightmare. When there's console messages, they can literally interrupt your typing. Look at that. Yeah, that's a nightmare. So what we do to make sure that doesn't happen is we go under the console port and we say logging synchronous. And we make sure that those console messages don't interrupt our typing. So a couple of commands there I wanted to show you. Now, when we configure a router's interface, we go in and we specify the slot on the router and the port that we're configuring, if those two exist, or just the number if there is no slot and port. So here there's no slot and port, so it's just serial zero. But here there is a slot and port, so it's fast ethernet, zeros the slot and zeros the port, for example. Once we type that, we are now in the interface configuration mode and we can do something like put in a description or of course put in an IP address. Yeah, we want to make sure we go in and we give an interface its appropriate IP address, right? So we go in to the interface and give an IP. And then it's always a good idea to make sure that the interface isn't shut down and that the two machines can communicate. Let me give you an example. R2 connects to R3 over fast Ethernet interfaces. So let me show you how we would configure these two. You ready? Configure terminal, interface FA0 slash zero, description, this is a connection to R2. IP address, oh, we'll do 192.168.1.2. Oh, and this is a connection to R1. I mean, excuse me, R2 is connected to R3. There we go. So let me redo the connection description. There we go. This is a connection to R3. All right, here we go. IP address 192.168.1.2. And we'll just do a standard 24-bit mask. And then we no shut down the interface. All right, great. Now let's go over to R3. Interface, 
fast ethernet zero slash zero description this is a connection to R2 IP address 192.168.1.3 with our 24-bit mask we do a no shutdown and then you end your configuration and what you would want to do is test connectivity can they communicate over that link look at this five packets were sent but one failed the first one failed because of ARP yeah that first packet failure between the routers was indeed while ARP was doing its job pretty cool Isaac says when I hear serial I think of RS-232 or RS-485 if the serial ports can connect the two devices why not use a fast Ethernet port instead of a serial port yeah well our serial ports are sometimes used in WAN environments our fast Ethernet ports are typically used in LAN environments Winston says do you assign the IP to the device or just the interface ah we're assigning always the IP addresses to interfaces yep we're assigning those IPs to interfaces not the device itself awesome stuff all right remember our show interfaces command remember show interface fa0 slash zero for example and one of the things it tells us is it's up up yeah fast ethernet zero slash zero is up line protocol is up what does this mean well it's basically telling us that layer one is up and layer two is up yeah that's really what it's telling us that's an easy way to remember those two layer one is up layer two is up if you went in and you shut down the interface with the shutdown command it would say admin down line protocol down if you had some type of a connection problem you'd be up down and if the interface itself was damaged or the other side of the interface was you know the other link was down you'd get a down down indication okay so an easy way to remember this is the first indication is layer one and the second indication is layer two